Victor for my presentation. Na allow me to actually greet our dignitaries uh, in this forum. So may I actually say good morning and a pleasant day to our secretary, Mr. Secretary in in uh, Geneva now, together with our assistant uh, with our USEC for R and D, Dr. Lia Bendia, and uh, of course to. Um, our speaker a while ago, uh, Jake, who, as a, who is actually one of our partners in this um, uh, research, uh, attorney Lisa, who actually facilitated the, uh, uh, the first uh, panel of uh, uh, speakers, and uh, attorney Scotto, Sir Martha Cadano, and uh, of course, to our former ASEC of the Department of Agriculture, uh, ASEC uh, Reyes, Noel Reyes, and um, paglapakan pa natin. <laughs> He's, uh, he is actually the, uh, at uh, Imarak now, sabi ko, bakit hindi ka po bumalik sa DA? <laughs> and then, uh, so, uh, may I also greet, uh, of course, um, Dr. Dayan Hira, represented actually by Jomar here, and um, Mami and um, Asidevera of uh, our PCARD, Catherine Sarkadias of, uh, of TESDA, and uh, of course Celia from UNFAO, and attorney Margarita Gutierrez of the USEC for Plants and uh, Public Affairs and Communication of uh, the Department of Interior and Local Governments. And of course, Attorney Lisa, I Attorney Gloria. A pleasant morning to everyone. To all our media partners, uh, maraming maraming salamat sa inyong uh, presensya dito at sa mga, mga online uh, partners or online viewers natin. Salamat po at kayo po ay uh, nakaka, nagkakaisa tayo ngayong umaga. So my presentation is actually the optimizing uh, food intake. Now, you all know that our institute, the Food and Nutrition Research Institute, is a premier agency of the government in terms of uh, conducting researches in nutrition, food science, and technology services. Now, um, we have actually three mandates. Palagi ko pong sinasabi to, the three Ds of FNRI. Firstly, in order for you to actually remember it or memorize it uh, uh, this year, we define the nutritional status of the Filipino population. Kaya meron po tayo sinasabing under nutrition, over nutrition, ilan yung hypertensive, il ilan yung mga, uh, met may, uh, mga cholesterol level na matataas. No? So we do that and we do it regularly in the past uh, three years or two years. We have conducted the recent National Nutrition Survey. That's actually, we call it Expanded National Nutrition Survey 2018-2019 and supposed to be 2020. However, we recalled our researchers who were actually fielded nationwide because of the pandemic. We spent a lot trying to deploy these people and then they called them back. However, we can, it is uncontrolled and the crisis was unpredictable so we did not have the 2020 national nutrition survey leaving actually the 37 provinces undefined or uncovered the second uh, mandate of fnri is to develop and recommend policy options strategies programs and projects for the implementation by appropriate agencies we are the ones telling to the department uh, to the different implementing agencies, hey, ito po yung mga programa, estratehiya, o kaya epektibong uh, pamamaraan para malutas ang ating malnutrition. And we usually do that area specific and target focus. We actually are in close communication with the National Nutrition Council, they being actually the policy making body of nutrition and food. After actually uh, perfecting the technologies, the programs, 
the models of uh, intervention. We diffuse this knowledge and technologies to nutrition uh, to, uh, to, to provide the science and technology to relevant stakeholders. And the stakeholders that we are referring to are the SMEs, the partners in the government, like the DA, the Department of Health, the Department of Social Welfare and Development, the National Nutrition Council, and other nutrition-related implementing agencies. So um, with that mandate, we have the vision of actually having optimum nutrition for all Filipinos, socially and economically empowered, through scientifically sound, environment-friendly, and globally competitive technologies. We tell you that our competitive technologies, most of our services are already ISO accredited. Now, uh, the conduct of the National Nutrition Survey, it being our first Monday, is actually conducted regularly in the Philippines. And this is at pinagmamayabang po natin ito. Kasi, this survey has a gold mine of data. This survey opened our doors for more collaborations like EMRA and Oceana. And we go as far as John Hopkins University as our collaborator in different projects. We also have networks with Sick Kids Canada and different more global partners. So, as a result of the National Nutrition Survey in the 2018-2019 merge files or merge data, we can see that stunting across our population groups is actually very high. Among our infants and young and uh, preschool children, about 29.5 percent, nasabi po kanina. Ni Ma'am no from Ateneo, na talaga pong is actually an economic burden. And uh, from, for our school age, we have 24.9% uh, uh, are stunted, and the underweight is 25.5. Among adolescents, our stunting is very, very high, 26.6. Now, di ba po, mahilig po itong mga adolescents natin ng basketball. No? Pero paano kung sila ay panda, no? pero nananalo pa rin tayo. Siguro ito yung mga pilit-pili na mga marunong mag-basketball no? na nananalo pa rin tayo sa uh, ating PBA. Now, uh, among pregnant and lactating women, uh, pregnant uh, women have, are actually nutritionally at risk about 21.5%. Those suffering from chronic energy deficiency, I tell you if I say chronic, this is a long-term deficiency, energy deficiency, and our pregnant women, about 10.7% are actually suffering from this. And on the contrary, we have about 29.8 or 30% of our lactating women are overweight. Dami natin problema sa malnutrition. <laughs> may, may overweight, may underweight, mayroon pang micronutrient deficiencies. So, triple burden of malnutrition. Uh, for our anemia, about 23% are suffering among our pregnant women and uh, lactating women, 13%. Papa, ano na ang, mangya ano ang mangyayari kung ang ating pregnant women, buddhist na, na, mga, na mga parents, ay anemic. Ang dami pong mga gastos niyan, di ba po? Kasi may mga consequences, negative consequences. Low birth weights. If a child is low birth weight, is prone to illness. Sometimes death. On the part of the mother, hemorrhages. Sometimes, hindi niya ma, ma, ma save ang kanyang buhay. No? Because of hemorrhage. So, ito yung mga consequences. And that incurs a lot of medical costs. That's why we always say nutrition is actually an investment, an economic investment. And uh, if you see those suffering from iodine deficiency, you can see here that among our lactating pregnant women is very high. And also among our elderly population. Iodine lang po yan. Meron tayo pong asilo, pero pinapa nire-review po natin yung asilo. Kasi pari, kahit na may asilo, marami pa rin tayong 
mga problema sa iodine. At alam niyo po yung mga fish natin ay good sources of iodine. May mamamaya makikita po natin. So, um, Filipinos are highly dependent on the consumption of seafood which comprises around 42.2% of the total animal protein intake and 18.3% of the total protein intake. So you can just see, pag, pag, pro, pag animal protein lang, ang ating porsyento na nagkumakain lang ng, uh, ng seafoods ay 42.2. Pero kung kukunin natin yung kabuuan ng protein intake, 18.3%. Now in the Philippines, seafoods are actually significant sources of animal protein. Rich in uh, critical micronutrients such as iron, zinc, vitamin A, and omega-3 fatty acids, but it is now becoming expensive and thereby it is inaccessible. Seafoods have a significant potential to contribute towards alleviating food insecurity. Nakita na po natin in previous presentations. Malnutrition, stunting, and cardiovascular disease, while strengthening the immune system and improving maternal and childhood health outcomes. Now to tell you frankly, only 44% of the households that we have surveyed in 2018-2019 are food secure and therefore majority of them, about 56%, are food insecure. And the worst scenario is about 13% are suffering from severe food insecurity. And this is too much for us. Now, with that kind of scenario, you have seen or we have seen that the prevalence of malnutrition among our preserved households underweight about 26%, stunting 37%, or 38%, rounded off, and about uh, wasting 11.2, overweight is 3.2. Now, among our school kids, no, six, uh, six to twelve years old, thirty-nine or forty percent are underweight. Forty percent are stunted, wasting eight point six, overweight four point zero. Now, soy foods have been a historically important source of nutrition for Filipinos, but estimates of seafood consumption per individual have long been in a declining trend. About 36 kilograms per capita annually, 1990-93, it went down significantly to 14.32 kilograms per individual annually in our survey last 2018-2019. Majority are consumed as fresh fish with processed fish, crustacea, crustaceans, and mollusks, accounting for a smaller proportion of seafood consumption. Now, the study that we have collaborated with uh, Emrag and Oceana actually is to recognize uh, because of the, of the recognition that seafood is an excellent source of energy, protein, and vital nutrients for human health. This study is actually in, has actually analyzed the role of Philippine fisheries in terms of food security and livelihoods. It has been presented a while ago. But both at the national and regional scale. We have assessed future risks to, secure, to food security and livelihoods in the Philippines and provided recommendations to Shana on policy options to strengthen the contribution of fish in nutrition systems in the face of ecosystem change. Now, our key findings. The, the data that we have analyzed in this is very voluminous. We have actually analyzed 163,235 individuals and for, uh, coming from 41,204 households collected throughout the Philippines uh, way back in 2018-2019. And the key findings speaks that uh, we can see here that um, for our fish, meat, and poultry, we only have actually um, have about 20, about 339 grams or 11.2 are consuming fish and fish products. Meat and meat products is about 21 and 
214 grams or 7.1 percent. So in total, lean fish meat and poultry were actually consumed about 665 grams or 22.0 percent, and that's the total contribution of the one-day mean household consumption. Now, uh, the, prev the, the trends in the per capita fish intake uh, in terms of grams per day from 1978 to 2018-2019, you can see here that there's actually a big drop. Although uh, you can see that's from 102 to, to about 94, no, 94 grams, that's the mean. If I say the mean, that's actually the average consumption of the whole population that we have surveyed. And you can see that there is really a declining trend. Now, trying to actually dissect our data into a better understanding on the food sources of protein in the Filipino diet by age groups, you can see here that um, if we try to take a look on the mean of uh, intake of infants, preschool children, school age children, and adolescents, gives us around 13 grams per day. And uh, for our sources of iron, uh, also, you can see here that fish and uh, products have actually, it is actually giving us only about um, 6% across infants, school age, and adolescents. And uh, for our pregnant women, we have 8.4% and 8.9% for lactating women as major sources of iron. And uh, you might ask us, uh, what is actually then the major source of iron among our pregnant women? It's actually rice. And you know very well that dry, the iron in rice is not really very much observable, or we call that actually, it's of low biological value. So calcium, we know very well that seafoods are very rich in calcium. However, it is spent, uh, it is consumed minimally by our infants, school age, and our adolescents. This is actually true to also to our pregnant and lactating women. Now, uh, proportion of Filipinos meat in the protein adequacy, this is actually very important. Only six in every 10 households had adequate protein intake. And 18.3% um, were from fish and fish products if we actually uh, disaggregate our data by households. And if you take a look on our data by age group, you can see that the, the, the consumption is not that so high. And uh, the mean one day household fish consumption by place of residence, now, um, urban and rural have similar scenario. So you can see here that they only have a mean of 231.6% for urban and about 232 percent, uh, 232 grams um, for, from the rural areas consuming actually fresh fish. So uh, for fish consumption by web status, of course, you can see here that there are higher first proportion of uh, those uh, who are have who are somewhat rich, no, and uh, are having a higher uh, mean uh, portion uh, edible uh, weight portion edible portion of weight in grams, no. So um, this uh, mean one day household fish consumption. Uh, it's higher among those which are the rich, uh, richest wealth free time compared to those belonging to the poor and poorest households. Now the mean one day individual fish consumption by region, the CAR and the NCR consume the least fresh fish per day while Sambanga Peninsula or the region 9 consume the greatest proportion of fresh fish per day. There appears to be a general decline in the proportion of fresh fish consumed at, uh, as latitude increases with those located in the southern areas of the country. That's actually a region 6 to Parm and Mimaropa, region 8. Consuming more free, uh, fresh fish on average than those 
in the northern regions like MCR to Region 4A and Region 5. Now, most commonly consumed seafood categories at the national level, the top species actually are tilapia, and then by around the, the round scud and the milkfish or the bangos. And uh, it comprises about 39% um, of the total weight of seafood consumed per household. Now, greater variance in the consumption patterns of urban and rural consumers are evident with rural consumers eating significantly greater amounts of canned fish, dried fish, fish paste, and various other species. Now, if you can see, wild-caught marine pelagic species are consumed in similar relative proportion irrespective of wealth. You can you have seen in my previous slides, no? And conversely, consumption of species produced particularly through aquaculture and marine culture, like free milkfish or the bangos or the tilapia, progressively increase with the wealth while the consumption of canned fish and dried fish generally declines with increasing wealth. And therefore, although milk fish and tilapia are more commonly consumed than various other wild caught uh, uh, pelagics uh, like the scads, tuna, mackerel, sardines, these species generally provide lower nutritional benefits per serving. And we have actually referred this to our food composition table. Now, milk fish and tilapia they generally con, uh, comprise lower amounts of protein, calcium, vitamin A, and marginally lower amount of omega-3, iron, and selenium than various wild-caught pelagic species per serve. Now, the nutritional benefits of consuming a greater proportion of the top two wild-caught pelagic species the round scud and um, the, the freaky free tuna are evident among regions of the Philippines. Now, in summary, we can say that only six in every ten households had adequate protein intake. And protein intake was inadequate, particularly among our pregnant and lactating women, adolescents, adults, and the elderly. About one fifth of the total protein intake of households were from fish and fish products. Fish and fish products are major sources of protein, iron, uh, except uh, infant and preschool children and uh, calcium. There were high levels of regional variation in the quantity of fresh fish consumed, while there was less variance in the amount of processed fish consumed. This spatial trend is fish consumption does not correlate with the distribution of fishes, fishers or the population and requires further analysis. And therefore, our recommendation is to improve the contribution of fish in food systems and secure livelihood of, fish, uh, livelihood of fishers, fish-related workers, and their families into the future. Because if we give jobs, then we are increasing their capability to purchase their food. However, in order for them to have good choices and easier for them to actually prepare their food, we develop a tool, and that's actually the Pinggang Pinoy. The Pinggang Pinoy is an easy to understand food guide that uses a food plate model to convey the right food group proportions on a per meal basis to meet the body's energy and nutrient needs. Again, we keep on actually advising our people to eat healthy foods. However, the main problem is where's the money to buy the nutritious food. So we better actually approach the problem holistically as has been presented a while ago. One agency cannot treat or manage the problem of malnutrition. It's actually, I always say, convergence of efforts. Convergence of efforts both from the government, from the non-government sectors, from industries, and of course, the community and the local government units. We have to play unity because oneness 
is always a success. Without that in ourselves, in the system that we are playing around, it seems that the problem that we are experiencing will just be, be there. Persistence, persisting problems occurring year in, year out. For us at the Department of Science and Technology for the Nutrition Research Institute, what we can only say is to adopt the technologies that we are actually developing. Our data speaks a thousand words. And therefore, it is actually for us now to digest and do sensitive and sensible actions addressing the problem of malnutrition. We can actually optimize seafood supply to increase consumption. So, skill training, market analysis, and partnerships among our partners, stakeholders, in order to actually increase the supply of fish and seafood. With this, my dear friends, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo. At uh, sana tayo po ay makaisa para sa ganun, tugunan natin lahat ang ating problema ng malnutrition. Salamat po.